Welcome to the Printed Cast Roundtable, a casual weekly show where we talk about what we've been up to and all the various gaming-related stuff over the last week. We're your hosts, I'm Chris. This is Grover. Hello. This is Mike. Hello. And Etna's over there directing us through text messages, because she's not actually in the room with us. And uh, it's been a holidays. That's that's our excuse for how little we've been kind of doing stuff lately. And, you know, within good reason, and it's going to continue to be that way. We might get one or two more shows after this one, I actually only suspect next week. And then we'll probably be on break for about two weeks or more, depending on how the weekends end up. Things. But uh, there may be some extra content in there. Grover's got some internet issues going on right now, so he may be disappearing for a little bit, but he'll be back to what he's up to, uh, has been up to. At least in the middle. And probably in the middle of January if I disappear. Mm-hmm. Fun, and, fun. And speaking of which, you said you hadn't been playing a whole lot this week. Uh, I have been playing one thing, and that's Minecraft. My fear of losing internet resulted in me downloading like a thousand games, and <laughs> then tons of people sent me games from uh, Humble Bundle or just, you know, game when they heard that I was going to lose internet, so I had something to do. So I could, like, start playing games now, if it went off now, new games, and probably not run out till May. That's how many new games I have, so yeah. But instead, I'm just sitting here playing Minecraft. Well, there you go. Play what you enjoy. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about, yo. That's quite a lot. Quite a lot. And quite a lot. Other than that, that's about it. How about you, Mike? Uh, well, you know, the World of Warcraft expansion's out, so it's yes. really all I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, we didn't hear much from you last week. You were kind of... Uh, oh, that was... Yeah, that was the whole... Workflow. Shoving turkey down your throat thing. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, I, I didn't think we were doing a show last week. I totally spaced out on that one. I was yeah. thinking, oh, it's going to be Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving was the day before, and I don't know why I didn't catch on to that after I ate my turkey, and then it was Friday after that. So, what have you guys been up to? Because you know me, just Smash Brothers and uh, WoW. So. Oh, I actually... I take that back. I did play some more Alien Isolation. Ooh. Finally got a little bit farther in that stupid medical board. I can't... I refuse to drop the difficulty, and I think that's my <laughs> problem. Because <laughs> I probably should have by now, and I didn't. If it's getting to the point where it's going to be dropping the difficulty of the game or quitting the game altogether, drop the difficulty. Oh, well, I won't quit. Yeah. I'm not a quitter. Mama didn't raise no quitter. <laughs> Gets to the point that you want to throw the controller at the wall. Yeah. No, not, not really that bad. It's just like, he sees me, and I'm like, whatever. I can't get away from him, because I don't... I'm too early in the game to really have things to get away once he does see you. There are things that you get later in the game that you can kind of buy yourself some time and stall him a little bit so you can get somewhere where you're out of his line of sight and then hide. I don't have any of that ability right now. I just know that it's there. So I actually quit one of my congregate games. Uh-oh. That card game one I was talking about last time. I thought you quit. I thought you were going to say for a moment that you quit time. Like, no way. Well, I wasn't actually going to quit Star Era, but uh, the servers have been down so much, I just got tired of it being down constantly. So oh. I still think her with Infernal Legend on there and some of the other stuff I play a little bit here and there. But uh, still on Tynan, yes. But Dana quit. Dana, Dana quit. quit? Yeah. Oh my god, that server is screwed. Yeah. <laughs> She controls, like, 50 of the characters. Well, not quite like that, but she does control a lot of the, the people that left the guild previously. They dropped their characters on her, and then she helps out a lot of people because a lot of them are overseas, and they don't... Uh, they're yeah. sleeping or working when the daytime stuff is going on with... Yeah, so with her gone, there's only a handful of players left, and maybe this is letting the cat out of the bag, but I don't think anybody on that server listens to the show, so I probably don't have to worry, but uh, poor man's quitting next if the game doesn't have some sort of improvement by New Year's, and wow. I probably be right there behind him because poor has gone then you know it's just over even the second life I've been playing it but I haven't been actually playing it most of what I've been You've doing been watching is going the building. Around, no not even that she hasn't been on hardly at all this week so it's me going around to those stores and finding little freebies oh I see <laughs> so I'm stockpiling but boy I found some nice stuff there was some stuff that was selling for like five to ten dollars in real cash that I was getting for free so that was oh, nice wow. yeah so I have a whole That's arsenal nice. usually when you see stuff given away it's like promotion items for a store or something that dates back to like 2004 and looks awful but uh, there you go yeah i played a little more of that hero keeper but i'm still just that ai is so random you'll have one game you just sweep right through it and the next it'll be they just dive right in at you and there's nothing you can do to stop them and then play a little more sonic and all stars racing i forgot how obnoxious that golden axe level was not because it's a badly designed level it's just so freaking long after three laps and when you've got the game doing some really crappy 
happy, uh, okay, we're, he's doing too good, we need to do something to catch up with. This is one of my complaints about the Mario Kart series. They do that same crap. Oh, yeah, I hate mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, all of a sudden, all the characters have, like, super weapons just out of the blue, and all of them hit you. I get tired of that type of stuff. Super weapons and, and Gran Turismo speed driving. Yep. Well, I understand the logic of why they want to keep the race close, because it's a lot more exciting than if you're way behind or way ahead. Well, in the example of Mario Kart, losing first place at the finish line because somebody in 12th place launched a turtle shell or somebody in 5th place launched a turtle shell, it's not real fun. Mm. If, it's, no, it's if I'm going to lose, it needs to be the person behind me that's getting me, not somebody that I've left in the dust a long time ago. I always liked in uh, 64 playing 4-player mode and you're playing on that little 4-player screen and you lose because player 3 or 4 or whatever uh, shot you with a green shell or something, you know, got a good shot. And yeah. But at least that's you, either get, luck or really good skill. That blue shell was just... Yeah, the blue shells are just garbage. <laughs> fire and forget is what you call it. Fire and forget. Even the red ones, you have to like, you have to know when to fire it. Otherwise, you could just hit a wall or something by accident. Yeah. Or you can, they could have, my stripes, you have a banana pill ready at all times. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. If yeah. I get a banana pill, I hang on to it if I'm in first. The uh, sound box is way better since it actually, you can get it and it will knock away a blue shell. Hmm. So. Wow. But I also finally got back to King's Bounty the Legend after apparently I had not played that in about a year and two months. And getting back into an RPG like that after such a long delay, you forget where things are. Yeah, you do. You forget where things are at hardcore. Thankfully, King's Bounty's maps are not exactly really complicated, but there's no indicators of this is where you got this quest from. So when it says, go take this back to so-and-so... You're like, who? (laughs) Crap! So I had to do a lot of blind hunting. But I have gotten far enough that I'm almost to the final land and I can get on to the next one, which is good because I have all three of the next games. I have Cross Worlds, I have Armored Princess, and I have... Uh, Northern something or other? Northern not, Lights. It's not War in the North. That's Lord of the Rings. Anyway, yeah, have that too. I want to play that too. Uh, I have that one as well. Then I played two other new games. Uh, one of them's Chrome from the Techland people, the maker of the sometimes controversial Dead Island series. But this was like 10 years ago, so this is before they were really known. And it's a really awful game with a lot of awful, awful problems, but there's one really defining moment of it. They have John St. John doing the voice of the main character, and it's if that name rings a bell or not, he's the voice of Duke Nukem. <laughs> he's not playing the Duke Nukem character, but just having his voice there, you know that voice. It's one of those really iconic voices. There was no other choice given that situation. And then another game called Betrayer, and I don't know how to classify this game. It's it's one of those mood-driven games. Matter of fact, to the point that everything's in black and white. That took some getting used to at first. And you're, you've are you crash-landed on this land that I'm pretty sure is supposed to be America during the early colonization period. And some horror Horrible things have happened, and it's, it's part adventure and part mystery, and there's a lot of horror elements to it, so what kind of craziness is now? And the only other thing to mention is something I got at the last minute. There was a uh, promotional from MMO Bomb where they were giving away a game called Brawlhalla, which is basically a Super Smash Brothers knockoff for the PC, and it's rather well designed on one end. It was a lot prettier and more solid than I was expecting it to be, because most people that's played any kind of, even the, the ones by the major game companies, but most of those are not very good. The next closest I can think of that is actually playable and enjoyable was the Cartoon Network one. And Mike will tell you that there's no comparison to Smash Brothers even with it. So I didn't really care for it, to be honest. It was a little bit novel at the time, but it, it grew old really quick. Yeah, it doesn't have the replayability that Smash does. Yeah, And um, it's got 13 characters on this thing, even though it's just in the beta right now. But what I was very disappointed with, though, is their setup with their characters. They all have technically the same move sets, and that kind of ruins a lot of it for me. Nobody has really their own special moves or anything like that that I've noticed, and that's it. Everybody plays identical. <coughs> and there's that. Mike's my reaction right there. Yeah, <clears throat> That was hard to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played quite a bit of stuff this week, actually. Not terrible I, amounts of time in any of them, but I played a lot of stuff. I did play one other game I didn't think of. <gasps> so, Derp. Oh. Damn it. There's a, there's another one. I played Clash of Clans, as yeah, always. Yeah. That's kind of like WoW, though, at this point. Yeah, it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, my WoW. Uh, but then I I played and I got Gran Turismo 6. Oh. Yeah. And that game is fun, uh, except for uh, I don't have a high definition television right now, mm. and the game is highly warped. Like, oh. it's warped to the point that I can't read the text. Oh. Because of so, not having a, a high def TV? Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking like, you know, I have a flat screen, but it's not high def. I'm talking like I have a 1995 television. <laughs> oh, CRTV. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, <laughs> it's blinding to watch and play. Yeah. A lot of the, the newer high def games, you can't play on those old televisions because the resolution just isn't what the game is set for. Yeah. There's, I, 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 
I jokingly uh, went to their forums and told them about it, and they their direct answer was, uh, sorry you're having problems, there's nothing we can do. This game was never, ever intended to be played on something like that. Yeah, I, had, I had problems with yeah. stuff like that on the 362 on my old TV set, so when you're playing anything that has a lot of text to it, especially with a CRT as old as this one is, things kind of wiggle and kind of blotchy, bloomy. So you add all of that together with the teeny tiny, it kind of makes a lot of games impossible to play. Unpossible. 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 Unpossible of that word. Unpossible. It's very unpossible. It's, not. it's the removal it of possible. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the first game that was really like that that I complained about that I can remember was Dead Rising. Hmm. And uh, I was really wanting to play it, but I didn't have a flat screen television. And that game is what made me go buy one because I couldn't read any of the text. It was so small. <laughs> So, but yeah. I, that, that, that's the game that made me go buy a flat screen television. And I still have that same television to this day, and it works perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm I'm getting one, so it's like middle, like everything middle of January that that'll be fixed here. Cool. Uh, speaking of things from the middle of the '90s, do you know what December third was? The 20th anniversary of the PlayStation. Ah, yes, wow. they released that uh, that PlayStation anniversary edition. Mm-hmm. December third, 1994, in Japan. Of course, it came out here about a year later, and like it came out, and I crash bandicooted it up. <laughs> That's exactly what I did when I got mine. Oh. I was old school. They only had the launch games. So it was Ridge Racer and Toshinden for me for like three months. And oh, then I, I got oh. Ridge Racer. And then I got Twisted Metal and oh no. Oh, and Warhawk. Warhawk and Twisted Metal. That, that, was, that was my life for a while. And they came in those ridiculously big boxes. <laughs> Yes, they did. This is an amazing story if nobody's ever heard. The reason they came in those big boxes is because the Sega Saturn had so many of them left over from their day that it was cheaper for Sony to buy those than it was to put them in their own jewel cases. <laughs> which is, That's awesome. Is that which really is why? Why some of them are in those cardboard ones, which those are the weird ones, like the old uh, Resident Evil and uh, yep. that was kind of the case in this. Well, if they had shortages of the cases, it was the case in the case. <laughs> that is awesome. 